Hello, this is another comment about what happened in the Hyde Park last Sunday at the 18th of June with that person whose name is Bob the Gob, that's what they call him. Bob does not debate to make it easier for the seeker of knowledge to see the truth, but he complicates things to deceive the truth seeker. In other words, he is agenda. When he debates with you, he doesn't look at you. But he looks at the people. And he shows them how he crushed his opponent. He wants to confuse him. To humiliate him with his blunt words. He's not only a rival, an opponent, but he is the judge. He's the referee against his opponent. And he has a very filthy team, the cameraman and the other one. They use filthy ways also to increase the confusion of the one who debates with him. Twice I was kindly asking him to repeat his question and he was mocking me. Where was your mind when I was speaking to you? This is uncivilized way of speaking to people. He addresses me just like a teacher speaking to his student. No respect, no value, neither to my knowledge nor to my age. He was saying to me, where was your mind when I was asking my question? He hides on you this bad approach. But he says to you, when we won against them, they started to beat us after we conquered them. Every time when it comes his turn to speak, he doesn't look at me, but he looks at the people saying, we defeated the man. As you see, the man could not give an answer to this. And he's finished. This kind of so-called debate should not be called a debate. This is cloning. This is a thug behavior, bullying and covering up the deficit by destroying the opponent psychologically. And deceive the viewers that victory is always with us, not with the opponent. He does not allow people to judge through reasoning, but he imposes on them. He dictates them to believe that victory is his. And he keeps always marketing himself. We won. We're victorious. And uh, the Muslim opponent is always losing. Come on, man. Give people the chance to judge it. Don't force them to accept your judgment. This is shameful. You do not know the ethics and the rulings of debating. This is the work of the thug, not the intellectual person. This is a mastermind or brainwash. The question is, was he the winner? Let's see the questions I was addressing to him and see, was he able to answer them? Look, he justified the clear falsehood, but he complicate the ease, the clear truth. Question was addressed to him. As Christian, do you believe that Jesus is cursed? He did not give an answer. He gave justification and nonsense answering by saying, yes, this is what we believe and we're not ashamed of this. And he started to justify this by saying, well, he took on himself the death and the one who dies on the tree, on the tree is cursed. So I said to him, so believe, you believe that Jesus, that Jesus died? He said, yes. I said, but you believe that he is God. Look now at the justification for the clear evil of this doctrine. I mean, simply, no one will be believing that God died. God is the grantor of life and death. 
this law of death does not reach him. But wait a minute. I said to him, so you believe that Jesus is body? He said, yes. I said, and that body has a private part. He couldn't say no. Look, it's in the Bible that Jesus, when he was eight days old, he was circumcised. Circumcised, that means, you know what it means that the private part by this circumcision can be prevented from the entrance of microbes and filthy and dirty objects in his private part. So the creator of the microbes and those dirty objects cannot avoid them on himself, on his body. Another thing, when Jesus was before eight days, he could not bear the circumcision. So they had to wait eight days until he'll be able to be circumcised. Can you apply that on God? God cannot bear circum circumcision because he's too weak for that. He needs to wait eight days to be able. You're talking about who? They call him God, but they're talking about a child. So I said to him, so God died? He said, yes. But look, look, immediately. They are, they are professional in justifying the evil. He said, but he conquered death. I said, how? By not dying? He said, no, by living again. <laughs> if we're all going to be living again, we call that resurrection so every resurrected being he conquered death as well so what is the significance between him and Jesus Christians think when you'll be conquering death when people will be trying to kill you but they could not kill you huh we call that conquering death and I ask him why he should die he said, to redeem people from their sins. I said, but he said in the Bible that I'm going to return and those doers of evil, those who commit evil and sins, I'll be collecting them and throwing them in the furnace of hell. So where's the price he paid? And how can God pay such price? Death. Look, the moment you apply death on God, even for one second, he's not God anymore. Then I was asking him, if your son would be looking at the crucifixion image of Jesus, he's almost naked, except they covered his private part. Would you be proudly saying to your son, this is our almighty God? He's naked, except his private part. Well, that also leads to another question. Does our God have a private part? Who set that God to be having private part? So the father will be grandfather. And if through that private part, Jesus had a child, would that child be the grandson of the grandfather God? Well, he kept saying, this is Jesus, the body. This is the body Jesus, but not Jesus, the God. Professional justifier for the evil. I said, all right, so Jesus has two personalities. Two entities, a divine one and a human one. But wait a minute. If Jesus, the, the body, is weak, this is not the only problem with Jesus, the man. He has another problem. His knowledge is efficient, incomplete, imperfect. How? He said, as for this, the final hour, 
Nobody knows when will it be occurring. Neither the angels, nor the Son, but the Father alone. So he is detaching himself from the so-called Father. Detaching himself. Saying, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not that God. I don't know. He knows. That guy, Bob the Gob, he was strongly, enthusiastically condemning me for not knowing the meaning of fickle and compressious. Well, not knowing those two words is bad for someone whose English is not his mother tongue. But what about that one whom you call God? He doesn't know about the final hour. So whose ignorance is worst? It's normal for me not to know some words. But it's not normal for God to be ignorant about when the final hour will occur. See? Whenever you can whenever you condemn someone for something, you have to remember if you have a house made of glass that your house will be stoned so your house will be devastated easily. So Jesus is ignorant. Jesus is weak. Jesus is cursed. Then I sealed my debate with him saying, I have destroyed, finished, devastated your religion. That what caused him to be extremely maniac and hostile. And he started to shout, shame on Muhammad, shame on the Muslims. With a big voice. Such a very big voice he has. It entitles him to be a seller of an auction place. To arouse people's emotions and shout, we defeated them. And when they were defeated, they are restored to the beatings. The video shows that he is the first one who hit me strongly. Hardly. Maybe my body touched with him like this. I was so close to him. But each one of us was shouting because he has a high donkey voice. So he was provoking tens of Muslims that were surrounding us. They were angry with him. You know that the word shame on Muhammad is a great insult that the Muslims cannot bear and be patient for. No matter how you know the, the police restrict us to be patient. Come on, Muhammad, peace be with him, is more valuable to every Muslim that than his own soul, his own children, his own life. He's bringing some nonsense questions such as um, God is surrounded with light and that light, if it goes further and further, it will be destroying everything. So God had to limit his light. And he put some siege. So the, the creatures will not be burned by his light. So he limited his light. He limited his power. He just want to disguise Islam with anything. With anything. Look, the teacher... He symbolizes the information given to the child. Although this, the teacher's knowledge is ever greater than the knowledge he gives to the child. Otherwise, the child cannot bear it. So this is of the teacher's wisdom. What are you talking about? The, uh, the, 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 the other thing I heard him saying, that the Quran challenges that neither the jinn kind nor the mankind will be able to bring anything similar to the Qur'an. Then he said, but the Qur'an quoted the jinn saying so and so and so. So, three, four lines, paragraph, quoted from the jinn, that means the jinn were able to meet the challenge of God, and therefore we have the words of the jinn in the Qur'an, that means the jinn succeeded in challenging the Qur'an. <laughs> I swear by Allah, this man is maniac. Look, the Quran contained, consisted in it, 
the words of the devil himself, the words of Pharaoh, the words of the enemies of the prophets. So that means they all they also succeeded in challenging the Quran. What are you talking about? Just want to exert enmity and hatred. Look look at the faces of those people. Not only him, all of those who keep shouting, cursing the Prophet Muhammad in the Hyde Park. What where is that statement we find in the in the New Testament? Love those of your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Pray for the favor of those who do bad against you. If they hit you on the right cheek, give him the other. Where are those m morality, unpractical moralities? We didn't see them through the behavior and the practicing of those people in the Hyde Park. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> Where are those instructions, moral instructions, when we compare them to the crusader wars against the Muslims that caused the killing of millions of Muslims? So, Bob the Gop, if you're smart, use your s smartness regarding the false, the false, clearly, texts of the Bible to save people from hell. What you're doing you are instead struggling, making your diligence to throw people in hell, as the Bible says. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you travel around on the sea and the land to pick some hunts for yourselves. And when he becomes one, you make him twice as much as a son of hell as yourselves. Matthew twenty three fifteen. So you are the 21th century sample of those Pharisees and scribes. You keep struggling on the people and when he becomes a follower to you, you throw him in hell. Bob the Gob, you won't succeed to break Islam. Billions before you tried, and Islam remained. And the layman people of your country, as well as the Western countries in America and all the West, there is a speed running to Islam. Only in America, every year, the average of uh, 20,000 American Christians, they become Muslims. Conferences are being conducted in order to make some measurements, set a plot to put the block on Islam and its marshal to the West. They failed. They will die. You will die. And you regret, by the way. You realize at the Day of Judgment that you are wasting your life. You've been wasting your life to block people from the religion of Allah. You will see that. If you don't feel it that, I doubt that you don't feel it. But your agenda. You're not working for the sake of God Almighty. You're not making that strive for the sake of God. You are agenda. And I have to give you this good news. You try your best with the money being paid to you to break Islam and to extinguish the light that Allah kindled. The Quranic challenge means the rhetorical challenge and the structural harmony of sentences, even in the numbers of letters and words with what we call numerical miracle of the Quran, which tempted millions of your country, countrymen, every day, every rising sun, into amazement in Islam. So they convert to Islam because of this Quran. Among them are high scholar, scientist, Western people. You will die before being able to accomplish it. Goodbye.